All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar, Relief, Stress and Anxiety with Art. This is going to be a webinar because I know a lot of us might be interested thinking that this is an art demo, but it is not. So uh, do welcome Paul. So let me just give a very short introduction about Paul. Paul is currently uh, conducting quite a number of art courses with Brahm Center physically and online, but because of the COVID-19 situation, we have moved all our classes online. And uh, today he will be sharing with us on the topic of relief, stress and anxiety with art. So Paul Lee actually holds a Master's of Art in Art Therapy from LaSalle College of the Arts. And he has been practicing art therapy since the year 2000. So Paul has experience in running individual and group art therapy treatment in various organizations, including uh, KKH, CGH, and several organizations. So please welcome Paul. And over to you, Paul. Thank you, Maggie. Um, welcome, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul. Uh, today I'll be sharing about how we can manage the stress and anxiety with art and through art therapy. So I'll explain how exactly art therapy helps to reduce um, our stress and anxiety. So let me share the slide uh, here. Okay. Okay, I will be sharing the slide. Let me see. All right. Okay. Now just go through, um, I think we have about one hour and 30 minutes. So we'll spend about um, 40 minutes for the talk. And then the rest we can do some Q&A. So um, first is actually just a quick introduction. And I think maybe have done a good summary. Then after that, I'll explain what is stress and anxiety and what is art therapy. And I will go into how exactly art therapy helps in reducing stress and anxiety. I will just share some of the research uh, and the latest, uh, some of the science um, project they have done. And I will talk about the process and product of uh, art therapy in case you are interested. Then we will do a summary. This is what uh, you're going to expect from hearing me from the talk. All right, now um, I actually have my Master of Art, um, Art Therapy with LaSalle. So I graduated about 2009. So I've done actually uh, art therapy for group, individual, for schools, uh, association for person with special need, for Hua Chong School, uh, institution I've done with Health Promotion Board, St. Luke, Taiwa Kwan, Touch Community, Fei Ye, uh, MOE, Ministry of Education, Singapore Prison Service, uh, et cetera. And I've done art therapy program at the hospital, so KKH, uh, KK Women and Children Hospital, Jiangyi General Hospital, and Guang Wai Siu Hospital. I actually I did a research thesis about art therapy as a modality of healing in stages for women with breast cancer. So that is a little bit on my background. Now today focus is, uh, we talk about what is stress. Now stress actually is our body reaction, physical, mental, or emotional, to any change that require an adjustment or response. So it is very normal that we feel stress from time to time. However, stress is unhealthy when it lasts for a longer period, like more than six months. And in fact, anxiety is very common type of stress response. That is where you will feel, we call, you feel anxious. And when there are a lot of stress with us. Now, the symptom of stress and anxiety, when we are stressed out, we feel a lot of anxiety. We have low energy. You will feel headaches. And it's, sometimes it's bad, you will have migraine. Uh, you have upset stomach including the diarrhea, constipation, nausea. You do have muscle aching, pain, tense muscle. 
chest pain, your heartbeat go faster, right? And you might not sleep well. So at night, you will have uh, a lot of sleepless night. Frequent cold and infection because our immune is uh, weaker. And then of course, loss of sexual desire or ability. And the stress do affect our thinking and memory because when we are worrying about something, the part of the brain, Amidada, the part of that govern our survival, actually it will take over, right? So it take over uh, our, and nominate our thinking. So other part of the brain that help to store memory, perform higher order tasks with less energy and ability to get their own job done. So it also affect your judgment, reasoning and logic thinking. So you can see that stress do affect um, quite a lot of uh, our brain. In fact, stress can kill some of the brain cells according to the research and even reduce the size of the brain. So chronic stress have a shrinking effect on the prefrontal cortex. There is an area of the brain responsible for memory and learning. So we will actually stop uh, learning new things. Uh, we cannot remember a lot of things when you are very stressed out. So that's how it affects the brain. So what if life without any stress or anxiety. Now, uh, according to Dr. Ressler, a life without stress is not only impossible, but also would likely to be pretty uninteresting. In fact, a certain degree of stress is helpful for growth. So rather than striving for no stress, we strive for healthier response to stress. And one of them is using art to manage the stress and anxiety. So now, a part of how uh, art changes our consciousness, there's a research talk about embodied cognition. So when we observe a profound piece of art, you are potentially firing some of the neutron in the brain as the artist did when they created the art piece. So you will make a new neural pathway and stimulating a state of inspiration. And this sense of being drawn into a painting. So when you see a nice painting, you feel good. Um, that is what we call embodied connection. So it's good to, like, sometimes you go to see um, a museum where you appreciate some nice painting. The brain actually feel uh, the desire, the pressure. So, and research talk about art and stress. Research actually found that Making art can significantly reduce stress. So you make art because it helps to create what we call hormones in the body. The study also found that creating art is a stress reducing effect for everyone with or without background in art. So if you actually do art, you don't need to say I must study art or must be good at it. No, the studies show that the, the result is equal for everyone doing that. So what is art therapy? If you are new, and if not, I'll do a refresh. Art therapy is a form of therapy, more like a psychotherapy. They engage our brain in a very subtle way. The use of visual form of communication, expression, and then resolution and change. So art therapy can be used for child development, personal therapy, family, and team mourning. In fact, art therapy is proven in medical science for reducing stress, anxiety, depression, fear, or other mental illnesses. So what art therapy is not, um, doing art for sales, exhibiting your art, or you're going for art competition, or you will take an art lesson or art tuition, doing art and craft activity. Um, these are all mainly performance oriented, skill oriented where you need to master a skill or you use it to socialize or passing time um, it is not uh, art therapy because it's not about art therapy is not about doing the art so it's the expression and the healing journey now the core of art therapy is what you see is a mind and body wellness so how does it actually reduce 
our stress and anxiety, I will share a little bit more. Because doing art therapy is like taking our brain for exercise and going for a retreat. So you take it and then you do something that the brain will enjoy. And beside that, the brain actually help, can actually have healing power when you do it. So there are many benefits of art therapy they bring that can strengthen our brain. I will not cover all of them. I'll focus more on the part that help reduce the stress and anxiety. And that's the topic uh, we talk about, right? So how exactly they do it? Now, if you have done the art before, now one of the important part is art therapy helps to unlock right brain functioning. So on the right brain functioning, where if you are very creative, you are very imaginative, you have a lot of uh, imagination, and then you will find a balance between uh, left and the right brain. So the, the right brain will find the left side, which is more on the logic. So that's where a lot of language, reasoning, uh, all these are actually at the left side of the brain, which we need them for day-to-day -day activity. But the right brain is the part that we call the creativity and the feeling emotion. So you can find peace, happiness, insight, and positivity with our right brain. So you go for a um, retreat, you go holiday, the right brain more or less will enjoy the scenery, right? That's what the art therapy will do. Now, the art therapy also help to process feelings. It manage the behavior, it reduce the stress, increase, we call it self esteem. The process will give you a feeling of self accomplishment, which can be very important to improve, we call it self appreciation and confidence. And this is the part of process, the feeling that the stress will need. Now the difficult feeling is the one that we need to deal with because in a lot of uh, extent, they run out of words. Um, the verbal language might not be able to express fully for our difficult feeling, especially anxiety, stress, fear, sadness, anger. As a result, the brain actually has lower in stress. So we talk about this part of the center of the brain, the amygdala, which have less stress. And that is where the brain will start to go into the therapy mode. The art therapy, one of the greatest benefits that you can enjoy is they give you a healthy outlet of expressing and letting go all your feelings and fear. So it's a kind of emotional release, it can be very complex, and when it cannot be expressed in word. When you cannot be able to express yourself verbally, you, uh, you desire emotional release, making art may help you to do so. And through the art, you actually find a new vocabulary because it stimulates the senses, it triggers normal memories. Art can help to bring the past, the present, and also what the future that you desire. So it actually helps to create the visual cortex where it encourages conversation when you have an art piece, social interaction, and you can actually find new way of expressing uh, yourself visually. And that can be very important, especially art have multi-dimensional value and the depth. And in fact, sometimes you will see the art will speak for you. It's actually represent you in a new language. And that's how the visual cortex will come into play. And art therapy uses, we call somatosensory cortex. Now, this including kinesthetic, sensory, perceptual, symbolic opportunity. Now, it allows both hands uh, to feel, to touch, and then when you draw, um, all this will come in on uh, the mode of receptive and expressive communication, which then can circumvent the limitation of the language. So rather than we try to explain an art, the art actually will do more sort of expression for you. So that is a somatosensory. Now through the visual of the integrated methods, 
at art therapy engage our mind, the body, and the spirit in a way that are very distinct from verbal articulation alone. Using our hand, our hand to draw, creating require physical connection to our brain. And that is one of the important parts of body and mind because art therapy needs us to imagine. You need to plan, make choices, execute an idea physically. Hands are our human outlet. The more you use them, the better is your brain. So doing art therapy helps to build our body and mind. And art therapy provides time, space, reflection, awareness, and change for good. Now, when doing art where you use our hand to stimulate the brain and promote mental health, relieve the stress, elevate anxiety. So if you can engage both hands, it's even better. So that's what we will encourage. Now, the part of the art therapy can be practiced as a form of mindfulness therapy. What happens is when you put yourself into art making, your mind focus on a creative space and they'll get all your attention. So when you do that, when you do that, it can be a mindfulness called focus attention meditation. And that is a form of mindfulness therapy that you will experience through art therapy. So if you go for art therapy, what is the role of the art therapist? So art therapist is trained in both art and psychology. And they are well-versed in a wide variety of art medium for appropriate intervention and population. So the art therapy will provide diagnosis and assessment from an art process and product. So that means when you do art, uh, during the process of art making, the art therapy will observe and they might be able to tell you what is going on you know, within you. And the other part is art therapy have a product. So if you have a product come out, doing art on your own, when looking at the product, you might not know what does it mean to you. So the art therapy will be able to share the insight and then they will be able to help you to go through the art. What does it reflect in your life? What are you going on? What are your hidden strengths, weakness, and your struggles? All this from the product, the art therapy will be able to tell you uh, from the art um, therapy point of view. Now from there, well, your art making process and the product, the art therapy will start to plan, we call intervention. So they might actually plan certain way of doing art, the certain medium which is more appropriate. And then they will support you, um, facilitate for you in order to uh, serve, we call specific needs and requirement or treatment purpose. All right. So now for art therapy, so uh, art therapy is um, for who? Now anyone actually willing to be creative, if you are willing to ex experiment art, uh, you will be able to do art therapy. So, and you will use art as a form of expression. So art therapy can be for children. Uh, children, for children, I think more for, we call developmental educational side. Um, personality development, and for them to grow up, able to express what is going on uh, within happening in school, family, the world around them. Uh, using art is more expressive than sometimes using words. So art therapy is very useful in that aspect. And it can be used for adults. Adults can be used for personal therapy where you use it to help finding balance between uh, the stress that you have with uh, your work life, your family life, and your desire, and all this um, would help in terms of personal therapy. So you use visual to express, and that is useful. It can be used for any adults, uh, for working adult, for um, family members, and that actually is very useful. It, also can be used for uh, family, 
where the family will make art together and they can actually see how dynamic between the art can help them to bond together. Doing something that different, having your own space, sharing the space and doing the art, seeing the process and the product. You will get to know each other in a different way. So that is actually for family. And art therapy can be useful where you can use it for development of team bonding. So a company can actually have a team come out and they do art uh, out of the routine and they can get to know each other that doing art uh, is not the usual way of understanding a person. So you might see a person very differently, uh, find a hidden strength, uh, what are the hidden talent and personality and you the team members will be able to get to know each other get more cohesive so that is for the team bonding huh? and of course you will see a lot of art therapy in a setting like at a hospital this is where we can use it for treatment treatment for mental illness like anxiety disorder depression um, trauma so if you have ptsd so always using art um, is very subtle. You will take slowly the stages that help you to cope with your illness and also how to cope with survival. So all this using art, you will help you to soothe the brain. And that is where you will find hospital setting. So art therapy is very wide in the sense that you can uh, do across quite a big um, population. And it can be just for um, we call normal day-to-day -day, uh, person who need form of personal expression. Or you can actually use it when you really feel overwhelmed, like the stress or anxiety disorder. Okay. Now, if you go for art therapy, most uh, art therapy by default they are actually private and confidential. So all the session. Um, will not be shared is actually like if you go for any psychotherapy or you see a psychologist it's the same thing that would happen if you see art therapist um, now it is necessary because this allowed treatment and then the respect for personal expression so doing art therapy in this setting will help you to be able to express um, any difficult feeling, experience, and thing that you want to process. And that will not be shared with any other party, with exception, sharing among the healthcare professional. So we might share with a uh, psychologist or occupational therapist or a doctor. And this is where we can actually determine how effective if when you are processing certain difficult feeling or you are going through a difficult time, um, how different element of treatment can help you. And if there is a possible harm to yourself, to others or the public, uh, then it will not, it will breach, we call the confidentiality, right? And therapy, when therapy is not comfortable, or you're not ready to treat the client, they might actually transfer your case to someone else with your consent. Now, other than that, you would, so first always check your art therapy session, uh, what is uh, the private and confidential um, condition? Do they have that? And you need a private space to do the art. So usually I will not share the artwork of the client um, because they are confidential unless we consent from them because that is actually for their treatment. And that is what you will see a lot of artwork that we share would not be more for art therapy session. Now, we talk about how art therapy help. Now, the life with art actually is healthier. So I'll talk a little bit more on this is where you do not really need to see art therapy. You can just pick up art as a hobby. You go for art lesson, um, or you do art with a um, person uh, that you want, or a whole family. 
the, the journey with art help us cope with a lot of uh, different things like uh, like loneliness now doing art will help to share uh, you won't feel so lonely you can share your work and when you are engaging the art you are in a way uh, going to this mindful um, present you feel, you feel the present and you can express uh, some difficult emotion uh, increase we call it self awareness so the self awareness work this way is where the art help you, you to observe the surrounding. So you look around what you like to do, you observe, and then you express, how does it make you feel? How are the art related to you? What are the topics that you want? And then you can go around, share with friends, things that you would like. And you have a choice, whether you want to share or not. So the journey for art is actually a lot of option. And some people with art, they actually experience the art turn their lives from a tragedy to triumph. Um, because making art help them, um, we call work through themselves, without you has to forcefully think about um, the issue or the trauma. And certain part that is not so severe, art can help to heal by itself. It can actually help us, uh, the brain to tune and then it can serve as a healing modality. So we're living in life challenges because life, as we move along, we do meet new challenges. So if you have new challenge, or you will try to help way to find a balance, if you can resolve it, then you can move on. Even you meet new challenge, you are fine because you have already resolved the old challenge and the difficult thing it become a positive strength. So if you can find any difficult situation, it become a positive strength for you to move on. That will be something very important. And this part has to be done um, subconsciously or unconsciously, where the brain actually uh, work by themselves. So life will transform when you begin to create art and then you turn it to a creative process. So I will encourage that you, you just do art uh, and always put your initial and date. Use it as your journal. Uh, as you move along, you can actually use it to reflect how you go. And the best is actually you take art um, and then you file it in. Either you get a sketchbook and then you can have it in a proper filing. Uh, or you take A4 side pocket and you file it in. Uh, that's where you can keep your art. And it's very useful if you are seeing an art therapist, it can actually help to share the journey you are going through. So life with art is healthier and always choose art form that is non-chemical uh, uh, oriented. So there are certain art medium that involve a lot of chemical that would not be good for the health. Uh, and that gives you stress actually uh, to some extent when uh, the very strong smell or you get addicted to certain chemical, that will be bad for us. So whether you do art as an activity or as a therapy, there are many health benefits. Now I would just talk a little bit on what I've gone through. So if you have just come in, art actually is great as a form of activity. So now you can go out, take some art program, uh, and if you like it, carry on. Don't like it, you change. You try another art form. Uh, you can use art therapy to reduce our stress and anxiety. So no matter whether you choose to create yourself, or you can just go out to the museum and enjoy a good um, art gallery, the artwork, it's actually a very inspiring activity. So some people, when they look at art, uh, you will have heightened, we call it, it was fire, um, certain neutron positivity in your brain. Your frame feel good. And that is where you, will, you sometimes you look at the artwork, you just feel like you want to create the art as well. Because it's just like, wow, the picture is nice. I, I want to try that. And that is where the inspiration will come in. So the benefit of artistic expression 
it's go more than just relaxation and enjoyment. So if you really try it, it's therapeutic when you make art, uh, you will be able to enjoy the effect of just doodling, painting, sketching, drawing, and all this can help you to uh, not only relax, but reduce the stress. And at least for an hour or two, we call that moment you are stress-free. And that hour or two is very important for the brain, we call take a break. So not trying to think about the past, worry about the future. And art therapy in that sense, well, for those who want to do a little bit more, you can actually go using art therapy because you can treat issues like depression, uh, anxiety, uh, post-trauma stress disorder, and then even some phobia. Right? So as a summary, now it is a great way to express your emotion without words, process your complex feeling, and find relief. And that's how art therapy can help us to manage our stress and anxiety. Um, and that is uh, the summary of today of my topic. Now, the next one, I would be opening for question and answer. Right? I will pass to Maggie to um, manage this. I'll stop sharing the screen. Okay, Maggie. Thank you, Paul. It was a very, very uh, comprehensive uh, uh, presentation. And thank you for sharing about what art can do for us. Um, just wondering, because there are some questions from the um, attendees, what are some of the tips you will give to someone uh, uh, who would like to attend an art therapy session? Uh, who would be recommended to attend a session like that? Or um, even for kids, would you be able to comment on that? Uh, yes. For those who are interested in uh, taking art therapy, and then if you are going for art therapy, um, no, there are a few options. One is you use art therapy, they actually treat very specific, um, we call psychological issue. For example, if the kids is, um, they have, they are a bit hyperactive or they have emotional behavioral uh, issue, um, that might not be uh, able to explain, explain in words. You ask them why you're doing that, they can't tell you. With that aspect, it's very useful when they see an art therapist. If they engage into art, the art first will be able to review what is going on with them, uh, what trouble do they, are they facing. And from there, the art therapy would be able to discuss with the parents or the teachers and find out the possible issue behind them and come out a few strategies. So the parent, a teacher can bring back and then implement a few strategy and come back for the session. From there, we will see is there any improvement. So I've done that quite a number of cases with uh, at the school. Um, I think, for example, um, I think one of them I have uh, example is where the kids actually at the school, inside a school bus, uh, they push other kids every time inside a school bus, very frequent. So that actually hurt the other kids. So it become very physical. And then of course they will get punishment. And when they go back to school, um, the, the teacher will ask them why you push other kids inside a school bus. So, but the kids just couldn't really explain what is going on. So I think one other um, result is after a few sessions. So um, I discovered that the kids actually only do it when it's uh, storming or raining day. So when they storm, there's lightning um, and there's, uh, they are very sensitive to the, the sound, the lightning. So when this thing coming, he will actually act up. He will just push around. And then that's where, when we discover that cause, so we give a strategy to the kids 
when there is rain or storm, we cover the ears. And we give it to who? The teachers, the bus driver, the assistant. So when they, they watch out when it's raining day, um, to cover the ears, help them to cover. And that actually resolve, uh, we call the behavior uh, issue, right? Now talk about adults. Now for adults, you can, if you have difficult feeling you want to process, art therapy is very useful because certain part you might not need to use word. Uh, but if you are feel very stressed out, for example, uh, you, you don't have good sleep, you work, your work is very demanding and you're coping it with difficulty, um, finding way to, uh, you have to find time to go for art therapy. But if you can do that, it help you to find a balance like how, what are the areas that you need to learn how to cope with your current situation before it get worse. I, I hope this answer the question. Um, following up, Paul, um, they also like to know where they can attend such course or sessions. Okay, so you have to remember art therapy is a service. So that if you are taking it as a course, then you have to learn to be art therapist. Huh? That will be a different story. Yeah? In Singapore, I think we only have LaSalle they can offer a master level of art therapy course. That's where you can go LaSalle, you find out more. Now, if you want to go for art therapy service, you can look for, just go to the web and you can find those uh, art therapy service. So you look for, it's an art therapy service rather than the course. Um, because if you go there, you learn how to be an art therapist or you go there, you're using art, as a therapy, we call as therapy or in therapy. Huh? So as therapy is not so uh, intense. I mean, I might use art as a form of therapy during art courses. So you will feel relaxed doing that. But if I use art in therapy, um, I would try to find out uh, what are the issues you're going through. And then I might recommend intervention uh, to do it. So important to look out is, the credential of the art therapist and the experience, um, the experience of the art therapist, whether would that suit uh, your situation. And that actually is, I think Singapore, we have quite a fair bit of art therapists right now. Uh, since in 2009, I'm a second cohort. So now it was 11 years. Um, so you can see, um, we should have quite a fair bit of them out there. So you can try it with them and then see how is it turned out to be. All right. um, Paul, I'm just curious if hmm. uh, someone do not um, have very obvious psychological issues, if they use um, art as a form of a hobby or painting as a form of hobby, uh, will it still work? Uh, psychologically well for someone like uh, who is um, probably like what you say couldn't sleep well or have uh, maybe stress would you like to comment about that now you, you are we call we call very working on places that uh, you have a work life and it's just a normal person huh? and most people um, can pick up art as we call you first, I think you pick it up as a hobby. Uh, as a hobby, you probably have to do it once a week, maybe at least um, once a month, sometimes a bit uh, too far fetched. Uh, most of the time, you will be preoccupied uh, with your work. Now, if you pick up art as a hobby where you, you do painting, drawing, for a normal person, it's actually a very useful activity. Uh, so you take time off. Uh, every week, at least once a week, time off to do art. So when you have that time off, plus when you do the art form, uh, you will feel relaxed. And if you don't feel relaxed, more stressful is probably sometimes because you say, I can't draw, I can't paint. And there are people uh, will be critic criticized. Uh, your work would not be nice. So you might need some time for yourself. You do art and choose whether you want to share or not. Uh, the time off itself is very useful. 
uh, an art activity is we call a quiet form activity. Uh, you do not need a big space, so you just need maybe a A4 size space, uh, some basic material like color pencil, watercolor, they are very easy to handle. So I think, and you will not disturb others. So it's actually a very great form of activity. The cost is very low. So you don't need to spend a lot of money. You can always just uh, find time and do drawing, painting. Uh, that is always uh, encouraged and it's always a good way to time off uh, for yourself from we call hectic life or from your uh, family life. You want to take a time off, maybe once a week, uh, about two hours, that would be very useful. Um, Paul, someone is asking, uh, what is the mm. best form of art therapy that is effective and applicable to all ages? Just now we talk about art as a hobby, but right. let's is if someone needs to go out and look for an art therapist or mm. art therapy service, maybe you can uh, recommend. Okay, uh, it will not be a one form or we call uh, the best uh, form for all the art therapy. Because when you go for art therapy um, session, uh, depending on um, the setting and also the training of art therapies. So you might be exposed to a few medium. The medium will make a very big impact um, to we call going to different uh, mode of um, emotional release. So whether you do painting, drawing, or you use clay, uh, or you use uh, collages, you do cutting, you fold, um, and then you, you might actually do um, many different forms of uh, medium. So they, it will be very difficult to say which is the best for all because we have so many different emotions and feelings. At a stage when I feel um, angry, so the medium we might choose something to be safe for you to express anger in the art room. Um, wow, if you feel uh, a bit low, so we might give you some medium that make you feel a little bit uh, more energy. So that is the part that we would see that when you see art therapies, it is it best probably is when we are trained in art, we can give you an option that what is the best for you uh, what is the safer way that you can express yourself when you have certain uh, feeling at this stage of the life, your current state of the mind. So going for art therapy will not be a standard, we call a procedure, one, one product, or there was just one medium. Um, each time you do, and your artwork will be different every time you create. So. And also depend on setting. So if I have it at certain institution, um, I might be, I might not be able to use certain medium like using clay uh, or certain paint because the, the setting might not allow. So now if you actually are uh, using, you go visit art therapies, you might ask them what medium they are familiar with. So at least you get to know uh, how well you can have uh, all the different options. And the art therapy also look into the art, uh, observe, and they actually do assessment. So the assessment of art, sometimes it can be verbal, sometimes it will be just visual. I mean, you can let the art speak for you. And the art therapy will be able to tell, okay, so what this is what is going on. And if it's uh, not ready, if you're not ready to process them, the therapist will not push you to process it. But once you are ready, then we will start to open up. Okay, now uh, we need to process certain difficult feeling. But if you, I do have someone now, of course, you will try to say, I want to be fast uh, to treat someone uh, we call maybe depression. but. It is not like giving you a medicine, it's actually non-medicine uh, therapy. 
So that means I would first understand what is going on uh, with you, and if it affect your daily life and routine, then we would look into the most important issue. Then we will talk to you whether um, are you ready um, to process this feeling and process uh, this emotion. So once you process it, you will have to either resolve them uh, in, and or you have to learn how to contain certain issue because there are some issue cannot be resolved. It's always there. But we can find a way for the brain to contain it and then we can actually move on without uh, feeling too much um, overwhelmed. And then you can move on with your life uh, easily. So uh, Paul, can I just um, uh, ask if let's say the client has uh, issues about drawing well and painting and feel stressed about it, or maybe not comfortable in certain medium. So by then going to a art therapist, the art therapist will then decide what medium or what uh, art form will be suitable for them. Is that right? Now for the, if you, if you first usually, when you go for a session, like for me, I will do an assessment first. And then the medium, I'll let you choose. You bring the comfortable medium that you like to do. That, that way, you will know that, okay, I'm comfortable with color pencil. I just bring color pencil. So now, that is an option that you can choose. So you can always choose what to do it, whether you uh, want certain medium that you're comfortable with, uh, but if the medium that you bring is not appropriate, then the therapist would um, explain that it is not appropriate and it is not safe, for example, uh, to use this medium to express yourself because you are going through a um, difficult time. Um, and then the therapist might recommend that you try another medium, but you can always try another medium and see how well it can help you to soothe your feeling, express yourself, uh, or can go back to very basic, just pencil and paper, uh, if the color is overwhelming. So, so you can actually go to a session and then decide, um, do I want to use uh, this medium? Um, or do I try it out the medium that the art therapist will give. And you will not be able to get it first time because you need to establish, uh, you need to get whether you feel safe in the art therapy room. You, do you feel safe and comfortable to put yourself into the art making? So when you feel that you are safe enough, then your feeling will start to flow. So. If you go to a place you don't feel comfortable, just tell the therapist I'm not comfortable and you can actually um, stop doing art therapies because that safety is something that you have to feel it. Uh, and different people look at different things, they will have different feelings. Yeah. Oh, Paul, I mm. uh, understand that you have uh, various number of years working with uh, individual and group um, in art therapy. So uh, this attendee was asking, uh, with your years of experience, when a cancer patient experience deep pain, start to paint, is it a divert of attention or internally they are experiencing mood change and that's where they uh, subside in terms of the pain? Is it a, a mental, um, Solution? Would you like to comment well, about? I think, mm, well, for I actually did um, quite a comprehensive research for the cancer patient, and I think art therapy uh, work in a way that well, when you are in extreme pain, you probably can't do art huh? um, because you feel the pain at the moment. So that part 
so you don't wait until you are actually in very painful experience. Uh, you will probably need to take painkiller at the time. Now, art therapy for cancer patient, it can be um, whether it's cancer survivor or where you actually in the process of uh, fighting uh, the cancer illness. The very important element of art therapy is where when you, when you actually make art, it helps the brain. Uh, we call it reduce, uh, we call the stress, and it actually reduces the pain, uh, painful experience by we call Ming into the present that you make art. You will not be thinking about the illness. That's one thing. And as you work on the art itself, you will feel that it actually uh, temporarily, we call forget about what you're going through. Um, then after that, the art therapy can help a person going through um, how difficult it is um, when you have to face a lot of situation. And changing, we call the, the way that you look at things, the perspective of your life, uh, it, it actually can be changed in a positive way. So you look at things in the past, uh, and also you are looking at self, yourself um, in the future. So art therapy will help to find a way that how you look at yourself in the past and the future, and then how you find a way uh, to come into a term that uh, you would need to find a new identity. And if your brain can come to a term of, okay, that's what is happened is happened. Can you do something about the current stage and the current thinking? So it's changing of the perception of how you think. Uh, it changed the way that when you actually uh, move on, and if your mind is stronger, um, the research has shown that when you take a medicine plus stronger mind, you can actually recover from uh, cancer uh, much faster than other people. In fact, I think there, there was one, uh, a very old research. Uh, it wasn't really a research, but it, it was a cancer patient and that is, I think, they have, what happened is there is one patient that he's actually he's an artist. So when he get cancer, he actually at a hospital. So he do art almost every day because at the hospital you're very free, yeah. so he can he can do art. So this this patient just do a lot of art. So after a few months, when the doctor check on his status, there is actually a it's a very miracle that doctor discovered that he actually almost recovered from um, the, the cancer. And I think that has triggered the interest to find out, so what happened to this patient? Did you give them anything special? So I think the research, uh, the, the case study is, no, everything the same. Then they find out, so what did you do is different from the rest of the patient. So what he have done actually, he only do art. So now the, then the doctor realized that, okay, maybe doing art help to relax. Um, and they encourage other patients to do art, but the, the same different result. So they didn't get the same result. So obviously the person who do art and another person do art, the result is different. So that is, I think how uh, art therapy started to come into, we call medical science and they're trying to understand what exactly uh, type of art and how you process it. Uh, you have to have something that uh, you use art and the brain work through uh, itself, coming to, we call self-awareness, a little bit of reflection and how the art actually uh, strengthen the brain. And when you fight with any illnesses or when you are surviving, you can get stronger. So. And that is, I think, cancer patients uh, do actually benefit a lot from art therapy. Do you remember reading any uh, medical reports uh, about such research, Paul? This is very interesting. 
I there was very long time ago. I think is uh, maybe uh, I read about this uh, case study. I think it's in Europe. I think this is in UK. One of the hospital. Um, I can't remember the case, but I think uh, that was before art therapy actually come into play. Art therapy only um, become official professional mental health professional about 1940. I think about 1942. Uh, this this uh, case study was before before art therapy is available. I think that was about maybe 19. Um, 1911 or 12, yeah. So it's actually quite a long time ago when uh, there is actually a case study. Probably Google search, you might be able to find them. Um, but that actually is quite an interesting case study that because it's not scientific, there is no proper research done. So it was not documented as part of the research in the medical journal. But uh, I think they do have uh, a lot of interest. And if you ask, you study psychologists, you will know Jung uh, or even Freud, earlier state of those psychotherapies, uh, they do place a lot of emphasis in art. I think, I think Freud or Jung, they do actually talk a lot how art actually help in terms of our mind, uh, going through what the complex mind is thinking. Yeah. So, I think you can find a lot of info over the, the web. Yeah. yeah, that is so interesting. Uh, Paul, I remember some time back, we talked about your work with youth. And you also mentioned that there are challenges when you work with youth in terms of encouraging them to uh, open up and even to uh, consciously come for the sessions. So do you mind sharing with us how uh, in your experience, you allow a safe space for people to express themselves through art therapy and to even first come into acceptance to doing a session with you. Because sometimes people might face resistance like, ah, is there a problem? Why do I need to go for an art therapy session? And in this case, would a art course be more helpful for someone who wants to help a friend or family member? Now, I think for, I've done uh, with the teenagers at risk, they call it risk teenagers. Teenagers which have a lot of uh, behavioral issue, um, troubles. Now the traditional art therapy where we invite them for art therapy, um, it, it's not responding very well. Um, because the teenagers actually uh, feel that you are reading into me. They, they are, and growing up, uh, they're very sensitive. They can see that. So, so what are you going to uh, read about my art? So they do actually, we call uh, very worried that the art therapists uh, would read into them and then start to understand more about them. You know? So now teenagers, I think we have uh, a little bit more complex issue is um, they face uh, growing up issue, pressure from the peers, um, looking for self-identity. As they grow up, they will want to be an adult, yet they are still at the, uh, we call adolescent, or they're teenagers. Um, and I think most of the time, we know that if you tell them, you can tell them a lot of uh, things that must do or must not, they will always respond usually, I know, I know. Yeah. And that is very common. So, so dealing with uh, that, um, I think at one of the institution that, uh, we, uh, that I work with, they actually are very open of how to engage them First, they have to come into an art session. So it can be art as a form of therapy. So they mean no um, intensive reading of their artwork. Uh, we call art in therapy. They mean I would I'll try to decode what they are going through. I will not talk about what they are going through. 
but they have a freedom to come in uh, and to do drawing, painting uh, as they wish. Uh, and the subject, they do not need to talk about it if they choose not to. So I think that is one option that uh, we give. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. They still refuse to come in. So I do have uh, a session that the first session, the, the, the boy who just came into my room and then they will stand there, don't even want to sit down. Uh, you just stand there and for an hour. Yeah, no art making, no talking. So you cannot do anything to me. Yeah. So I think that is um, possible huh? that uh, if I talk to you and then you're going to start to probe and then ask me a lot of questions. If I do art, you're going to find out what I'm going through. So, but subsequent session, uh, he, he started to do painting, but there's no form. So he just do painting. Yeah. So I think as uh, to have a space that no one is watching them is important. And they have to feel that art therapy is non judgment uh, it will not judge them. They can do anything they want in a session. And then they will just use it as therapy, just relax. And then they can actually uh, take a time off uh, from uh, teachers, from parents, from counselor, because what uh, they are going through is people will nag at them. Uh, don't do that, cannot do this. And um, so, when the space is safe enough, they feel very comfortable, they will open up. Yeah. So eventually, actually, he opened up quite a lot of what he's going through. And then from there, they will be able to share. And I think they feel uh, they need to be shown respect uh, as an adult. So you can actually share things that with them and then see what is going on. Now, the other thing that teenagers uh, respond very well is on the digital age. So that means if you engage them in a digital art form, uh, you engage them into animation. Um, and that actually we have, uh, in fact, I've done that with uh, the school for about a year. Uh, the result is quite significant. They actually uh, look forward to come to animation session. So that means they come in, they learn. So we would do a little bit we call education. That means they come to a session, uh, we teach certain technique. So with that, they feel that uh, I'm picking up new skill. And this new skill, they can use it to express uh, themselves. There's a freedom in space for what they want to do. And they come in a small group. So this small group uh, will come in and share uh, among themselves and share with the therapies. Now, my experience, um, I've done it with a few groups. I think one of the group uh, initially when they start to come in, um, because um, they, they come in to the session, I think about uh, four or five of them, uh, they would speak in their language. So they're all Malay. So I don't under fully understand Malay. So they know that, okay, you don't understand. So they discuss among themselves or in their own language. But uh, they are very happy to learn how to do animation. So I think the time they will listen to me, after that when they are dis discussion or in Malay. So for a few sessions, until about in the mid of the session, they start to have someone would translate for me. So they started to feel that I want to connect to the therapist, you know, that let the therapist come in and then they start to share uh, what is going on. Then after a few sessions, in fact, I think towards the uh, well, uh, final part of a few sessions, they all speak in English. And then we, they start to open up. Uh, and then from there, we can work with the, the group. So the group actually have uh, show, in fact, I think the school do have a feedback that their behavior improve a lot. Uh, because they tend, I think, well, the one that I work with a lot are very violent. So then the art actually help them to calm down. And when they go out, they, some of the teachers are very impressed. It's, it's a changed person. 
so they come out a little bit more gentleman, you know, rather than uh, you know very, uh, using a lot of vulgar language, um, you know, very forceful. Uh, they become a little bit um, we call like a person that is more polite. So I think yes, I would say if any teenagers, if you allow them um, to express in visual in art. It is actually one of the space. I think there is no limit of what issue they can open up. Yeah. So it's one of the uh, recommended form of art. And if you, because art, drawing, painting is um, is we call it can be very quiet activity. So that means if they can actually have a space and do art, and they will not disturb others, and they can choose where they can share. Right? Thank you. Paul for sharing. Now uh, we are five minutes past five, but let's ask, is it okay we take the last question? There are uh, several questions about uh, art therapy being suitable for people with old age or early dementia or people su suffering from early onset of Alzheimer. Will art therapy slow down the disease? Or should they attend art therapy with art therapists instead of their children? Now, for the older adults, um, art actually have also proven that it can actually slow down the disease, uh, dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Uh, research has shown that art actually slow down uh, the disease because it helps, we call the brain um, to. Uh, we call regenerate uh, and I think Alzheimer or dementia they do have this short-term memory uh, start to uh, degenerate and the art help them to reconnect the part of the brain uh, the past and the present so now they, they do not necessarily have to go for art therapy per se they can actually just uh, come together as a small group um, and do certain form of art. Uh, it can be um, art and craft. Um, it's always help because they focus in an hour to so do art. And if there is a continuity, what you will see that um, I've done that at, actually at CGH and also at Kwang Wai Siu uh, for uh, some of the patients with dementia. Uh, I think a few of them, some of them is very impressed. It's, when initially they just do the art, so one week later when they come back, uh, they can recognize this is my art. So, and that is something that uh, is quite uh, impressed with um, the caregiver because if short term memory, you cannot remember um, the art they created one week ago. So uh, yes, doing art help the brain uh, to find the balance between left and the right. Now, on the right side of the brain, where you, we call it stimulate the brain. So when art stimulate the brain in a healthy range, it's not, uh, so maybe you don't ask them to go for um, certain performance oriented art where they have to perform art in certain way, then it's stressful. So doing less stressful art form, it helps to stimulate the brain and the brain can actually help to heal themselves and that slow down the Alzheimer's disease. And if you do it uh, frequently, um, they still doing a lot of study uh, with that. Would that, uh, when they slow down, how would that heal if they can stop the brain from getting worse? Then uh, that will be very significant because uh, you still can remember things. It's just part by part, you start to reorganize and we call reintegrate. Uh, and then the brain can be healthier. Yeah. Paul, um, is it okay that I ask another two more questions on behalf of this attendee? Uh, uh, yes, yes, we can right. uh, have another uh, few questions, it's fine. So how could we use art therapy in the correctional settings? Given your experience with inmates, could you give some tips? That is the first. And then mm. the second question is, what are the differences between art therapy and music therapy? Okay, I'll talk about uh, the, the corrective or rehab. Huh? Um, I think 
the the art therapy work in a way um now the prison service is can be a bit challenging huh? because there is a limit in terms of medium that i can do so i cannot bring any pencil inside uh no hard thing that i can bring in so um so there is a limit of uh the art therapy that we can do but i think they are improving that situation is because of safety, safety to the therapist as well, huh? um, and safety to the inmate because a pencil can be a weapon. So, um, so now if uh, for the inmate or we call, depending on the issue they are going through and the reason they are in there, uh, the, the emotional release is, can be very uh, overwhelming. Um, so I would recommend probably either do it in uh, one on one or you don't do it as so intensive as the beginning. Uh, in order to first, they have to use art maybe as a form to calm themselves down first, uh, give themselves a time off for the brain to settle down. And if they can actually start to process the difficult feeling, why they are doing certain things, and what is our consequences? We call a journey of personal awareness and self-reflection, which uh, that part, um, if they can actually reflect and if they can say it's time, they can change for the good. In fact, art can actually tell whether have they changed for good. Because uh, in the artwork is when you do it, um, we can actually know that it's a journey that what you're going through are you able to um take it that when i come back i'm going to do a fresh new identity so if you can find a new identity find a positive strength what are your hidden strength that you have and how you can move on without uh, the past affecting them because when they come out looking for job will be challenging people will still have um question about them and they are all uh, we call connection will come back to them so it's it's a form of very intense um a session that the brain has to go through and then come into term and the person has to be stronger than before in order to stop we call we call that bad influencing and when people criticize them they start to talk about bad about them they must be strong enough to hold themselves and they can actually go back to society as a stronger person. It is possible, but it's just that it takes actually quite an intense work for that. And then what is the second question? Next question is, what is the difference between uh, art therapy and music therapy? Okay, now the art therapy in the 19, about 42, when they first uh, recognized um, Art therapy uh, is basically started with more on visual. Uh, I mean, is um, drawing, painting. Um, so that is where it started. Um, as they move along, they realize that a lot of interest started to come in. So you you have not only just painter artists that paint and draw become art therapy. You have musician um, started to say, hey, "I I like." To become an art therapist so not only musician then you have uh, people who perform in speech and drama or in the drama series they start to come in so with that interest coming art therapy start to come out a subset so you have we call music therapy then there's a play therapy uh, you do have people who come in and we call dance therapy um, it, it come out even as sand therapy, drawing therapy. So they start to come out a, very, a lot of subset. It's because of the therapy's background. So if the therapy is trained in music, um, fair art, they start to say, not only just drawing, painting, you have music, and not only music, movement. So you do acting and all this, yeah. So the difference between traditional art therapy and the music therapy is, the music therapy is very focused using music as so they mean you will have you play musical in instrument you will listen to music you process uh, the music 
Um, and we call that part is more demanding because you need a room that is soundproof, right? So you might play a drum, uh, small drum, big drum, but if you are doing that, then uh, it outside can actually hear you because it's actually music. So that's a different where you use music uh, to do therapy. And then if you do movement, this so they don't do drawing. So you go to a session, they will just tell you to act, for example, use movement, body language. Huh? Um, so that is the movement. Then if you go to a session like we call sand therapy. So they actually do sand only, uh, use sand. And, and it, there's a very popular one for children is they call play therapy. So what they do is they take toy, different toys, they come in, you play, and then they analyze the dynamic while the kid play with it. And then we can come out uh, if they have certain issue, with, you use a toy, it can evoke, we call certain dynamic from the play therapy. And then you have even photo therapy. And they would have take a photo and then we do um, analysis. So if you actually know that there are a lot of subset, yeah, these are actually all come because of the training of the therapy. Now we have occupational therapy also become art therapies. We have counselor also become art therapies. So their training background is not art. They are counselor, for example. The training is not art, but it's occupational therapy. So what they do is they take art as additional of their professional background. And then they actually merge them to help the job um, better manage. Not only I just talk, I can use art and then get uh, more informal therapy and combine with talk therapies. So that is the differences. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. I think this session has been very, very helpful. Um, can we also safely say that if we are not prepared to even go for a therapy uh, session, uh, taking art as a hobby or as a regular uh, stress reliever, it is actually considered as a form uh, where we can slow down aging or even dementia and Alzheimer. Can you comment about that before we close? Uh, I think Ching San wants to say something. Maybe you can comment and then he can actually say some uh, any okay. words. Yeah. Now, uh, I think um, as a summary, um, yes, art is uh, it's always a good form to use it. Uh, you take normal art courses or you go for some art activities. Um, it's always a good form and especially if you can uh, let the children start younger where they have art activities uh, and if they use it just as a hobby, uh, it do actually um, only good, they only do good thing uh, than harm where you have one extra hobby art when you go out to work life, it, you find it's more difficult when I want to pick up as a hobby because working life is so busy and you have family life, you have work life, to find a way to find a new hobby, it takes a bit more challenge. So yes, I think art is always a good form of uh, activity to reduce stress, find expression, and then help to connect each other and connect others. Yeah. Uh, thank okay. you, Paul. Uh, mm. Paul, that was a very good uh, discussion. Uh, and uh, you also give us a lot of additional information by answering the question. And I do want to emphasize uh, something that you said, yeah? Is that um, even though art can be, uh, you know, right brain activity, uh, our brain doesn't work like that, you know? Our brain actually is one brain, yeah? So when we do something actually with, uh, on one side of the brain, the other part of the brain actually also get activated. And just like what Paul said, right? When you're doing art, uh, you are looking at colors and sometimes there's texture, uh, sometimes there's stroke, some movement. All this engages the brain. So it is not just uh, uh, you know, one activity. To the brain, it's many activities that is coming into play. And this really helps, uh, first, us to stay young mentally. Uh, second, uh, it can slow down uh, some of the... Um, illnesses that will come naturally as we age. So I think in, in Brahm Center, uh, we recognize that art can be therapeutic, although we don't do 
art therapy in Brahm Centre. But, you know, uh, it is an opportunity for the public to come and join and learn in a very comfortable space. And now, because of course COVID, we want our, our attendees to be safe. We are doing a lot of it online, but uh, soon we should be able to conduct our classes normally in our centre. So our Tampani Centre is huge. It's the size of two badminton court. And uh, so safe distancing is not a problem. <laughs> so I think uh, uh, I'd like uh, Maggie maybe to show the, share the slide that you know, we do have some art courses that's coming and choose one that you think you will like. I think the most important thing is that it must be an activity that you enjoy doing. Right, thank you Cheng San for wrapping it up so nicely. So allow me to share screen. Um, and I think someone was also asking, Paul, maybe you can comment whether um, Chinese calligraphy is also considered uh, art therapy or even helpful. Maybe you can comment about that. Now for, I think Chinese calligraphy uh, is by itself is actually very therapeutic. In fact, I think it's the, the art form of uh, writing beautiful words. Um, that because it's an art form, um, when you do it as a leisure, yes, it's very therapeutic. But if you are learning stage or you are a student, yeah, it's under a lot of uh, pressure. There yeah, are a lot of stress because uh, it's very demanding in terms of uh, the discipline of holding the stroke has to be right. So it can be um, stressful activity for children, but for when you grow up as an adult, uh, if you actually do Chinese calligraphy or even brush painting, it's very therapeutic um, because you focus on the stroke um, and then you hold the brush, you actually lift out the brush. Uh, and if you are traditional, there is this ink grinding in fact, the ink grinding is very uh, soothing because you have to use the strength evenly to grind the ink smooth. And that is actually very therapeutic. Thank you, Paul. So thank you for those who have stayed on uh, longer than expected. In fact, this is an hour talk, but uh, thank you for uh, Paul for spending time to take on extra questions. And uh, I'd like to just quickly wrap up on some of the art courses that we provide at Brown Center, such as Zentangle that's starting uh, very soon in uh, July. Uh, and also some other uh, programs like watercolor and florist and brush lettering. Um, Paul, you are going to start some new classes in August. So um, for those who are interested, please uh, stay tuned on our Brown Center event bright page. It will be posted first week of July. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Paul. So I thank hope you very much. Thank you. have a good uh, weekend and happy Father's Day. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.